and he does he does a lot of of moral high ground posturing yeah i think all of that's there so we can talk through that and you know that's that's good classic stuff for them and there's containment shown in him and i I can point those out and then we can chime in there for is is we're giving it seven minutes do we do we want to play through it and just go stop and that might be easier scott i think it's going to be easier yeah to do what just 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 play through it and we go okay let's stop let's stop there and say a little bit <laughs> oh yeah what a crazy guys tiger yeah. farm amazing yeah so we're all right. current all right you ready yeah yep here we go. I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst. I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language, help people all over the world stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they speak, including some leaders of the G7. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I'm a behavioral expert, did 20 years in the U.S. military, and now I teach interrogation and behavior profiling, and I'm a trial consultant here in the United States. I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written a bunch of books on body language and behavior, and now I spend most of my time with corporate America and Wall Street. Today, we're going to talk about President Trump's speech dealing with the unrest in the the U.S. It's all over the U.S. It's important to remember, as we go through this, we're not political when we do this. And we we call them as we see them, right down the middle. And if it leans over this way, we're going to say how we think it leans over this way, and we'll give you the reasons why. We think it leans over this way. We're going, to see, we're going to tell you why it leans over this way and give you the reasons why. So it's important to remember, we're not political. We're just, we call them like we see them. We want to tell you exactly what we see and what, the way it looks to us. So right out of the gate, let's just go ahead and, and watch some of this, and then we'll get started. Yeah. Greg, you had something. So guys, I worked years ago with the White House Writers Guild with a few folks from there, a guy named Josh Gilder, who was a partner on a TV project I did. And they would say, Josh said the best moments of his life were Ronald Reagan as president because he could deliver a line like no one else. Realize that all of these people are delivering scripted information. They may control content, but the writing and the the, the actual speech is not something they've written. And we're gonna see a lot of that, and we're gonna talk a lot about that in this delivery. You don't see the usual circus of body language that Trump does in this, and we'll talk through it. And Mark, I'm sure you see things that stand out, and we'll point those out as we go through as well. Oh yeah, there's some great writing here for sure. Okay, all right, here we go. Thank you very much. My fellow Americans, my first and highest duty as president is to defend our great country and the American people. I swore an oath to uphold the laws of our nation, and that is exactly what I will do. All Americans were rightly sickened and revolted by the brutal death of George Floyd. My administration is fully committed that for George and his family, justice will be served. He will not have died in vain. But we cannot allow the righteous cries and peaceful protesters to be drowned out by an angry mob. The biggest victims of the rioting are peace-loving citizens in our poorest communities. And as their president, I will fight to keep them safe. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. But in recent days, our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters, Antifa, and others. So what we're seeing here is one of Trump's most important speeches ever. So as he comes out, he's doing that classic presidential stoic walk. You don't see his little jerky movements. He's not looking around. Nothing else happening, but he's walking toward that that podium. And when he gets there, we know this is important to him because he, as he's holding both sides of the uh, podium, not once, not one time during this whole speech do both hands come off. You see one, you see them, they both come off at different times, but not never at the same time are both hands free. You see at the end where he says, Whatever it is, it's over. You see his hands come up and sort of uh, tap the top of the podium. But that sort of signifies that, that the speech is over. Usually his, his illustrators are huge. He's classic. People always ask us. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Trump is like a gift every day when you see him. And he is. Because he's doing, he's always doing this. He's pinpointing this and he's doing that. He's got his, his elbows in. And he's almost doing karate chops as he's, as he's talking. His illustrators are huge. But in this case, 
I believe he's been asked to uh, rein, rein, rein that in, you know, kind of reel it in a little bit. Because as he's gripping that podium, he's still uh, illustrating, hitting those specific words and phrases. Illustrators are the things that we use to to emphasize specific words and phrases, like I did just then. And as we as he does that, that's where that's where the squirming starts, and the ducking, and the squinching, and the elbows coming forward, and the and the shoulders coming in. Because he's trying to do that, he's just not used to to holding still and not using all of his all of his illustrators. Uh, this is um, a great example of why absolutes don't work. If we if we were watching him for absolutes, we would see that shoulder rise and think it meant something. But he's holding the. the I, I agree with you. He's been coached. You'll notice later. I'll show you. I'll point out exactly where you can see the coaching. He's been coached to hold onto that to that podium, and you see his shoulder move because he wants to move his arm. And there's only one time that you get any real body language as a result of it because he's moving around so much you, you can't miss it. And sorry to step on you, Scott, but I wouldn't. No, no, that's totally, no, what we're doing. We're, we're telling yeah, what we yeah. think. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that's, that's, what, that's the way I see it. As an overall, he's trying to, he's, he's attempting to stay controlled. I think he does a pretty good job of, of, of not moving his hands out. But, but a couple of times, a couple of them get away from him. But that's because those are really important to him when he's illustrating those. You know, yeah, so, you've you got know, really good symmetry there, uh, which is usually um, a good signal that somebody has been told to be symmetrical, especially with Trump, because usually you get these OKL gestures would come in pretty early with him. So he's really buttoned down. Has to be said, he can take in... W can take instruction quite well. Uh, did many, many series of The Apprentice. He does a great job in The Apprentice. You know, was instructed by Mark Burnett on that. So when it comes to taking instruction, he can take it. We will see him do a few OKLs, I think, a little bit later on. But uh, but he's well knuckled down at this point. Yep. Chase, what do you got? Pretty similar to you guys. I saw the – we see a deviation – from his normal behavior here. And that's one of the reasons I think that, that we thought this, this video would be important here because it's so different. And people ask us to do Trump all the time, but I think this one is great because it shows just that grabbing onto the podium, absolutely coach. And what we're seeing, I think, with the shoulders is resisting his, his normal impulse. And I saw a body language expert analyze this video already on, on YouTube and said the the teeth exposure is a, is a sign of him being really angry. And uh, that is absolutely false. And I hope you guys agree with me. Oh, but you, 100%. He does it you know, all the time and it's not angry. It's, yes. Yeah. You can go back to his appearance on Oprah in like 1985 or his interview with Larry King in 1987 when he's a 30-something. Yep. And – you can see the exact same behavior. It's never changed. And one thing you'll notice here is when we have outlier humans, they tend to have outlier behavior, just like Bill Gates. Yep. So we'll see a lot of the strange behavior in humans that are, that are outliers. Yeah, Chase, I, I'll go back and I'm going to hit a couple of things you said, but also add a few others. He, if you go back and watch him as a young man, his body language is a bit of a circus. I always say he is an outlier. He is, he's an 800 pound gorilla in his own world. He's a creature of his own making. He's managed to create this bubble around himself and people copy his body language is the great indicator, but the way he moves his mouth, all of that stuff is very much Trump. It's a unique thing. The thing I noticed in here very early is he strikes a pose when he hits moral high ground. He knows that those, that script is right. When it talks about things like I took an oath, the American people, people, exactly what I will do, will not have died in vain. In every one of those, he strikes a pose a bit. Now, that's not because he's lying. That's not because, that's because he's Donald Trump and he is keenly camera aware. And because that's human nature. If either of us were delivering that same speech, there's a certain amount of pride and a certain amount of raise of your head that's going to happen, uncovering his throat. All that's clear. It's, even though he's coached, even though he's controlled, his body language is still leaking. And this is what I want you to pay attention to, is it doesn't matter how good your coach is you're still human. There are going to be a couple of times you're going to see things in here. I saw things in here I wish I could not see, not because he was lying, but because of other reasons I'll point out as we go through, because humans leak information. So those dominant behaviors that we'll usually see him do at the, at the rallies, and he'll do them full blast, uh, you know, which is that chin jut that he'll do in, in profile to get that classic Romanesque 
dominant coinage uh, yes. icon, essentially. Uh, again, I think you're absolutely right. We see he, he, he can't stop it leaking, but it is, you know, compressed down yeah. because somebody has come to him and said, you know, this time, keep it still, you know, keep to the script, stay on board for this one. It's super important. Okay. I think he does a good job of uh, staying on script. Yeah. A number of state and local governments have failed to take necessary action to safeguard their residents. Innocent people have been savagely beaten, like the young man in Dallas, Texas, who was left dying on the street, or the woman in upstate New York, viciously attacked by dangerous thugs. Small business owners have seen their dreams utterly destroyed. New York's finest have been hit in the face with bricks. Brave nurses who have battled the virus are afraid to leave their homes. A police precinct has been overrun here in the nation's capital. The Lincoln Memorial and the World War II Memorial have been vandalized. One of our most historic churches was set ablaze. A federal officer in California, an African-American enforcement hero, was shot and killed. These are not acts of peaceful protest. These are acts of domestic terror. The destruction of innocent life and the spilling of innocent blood is an offense to humanity and a crime against God. Chase, you got anything? Yeah, so what we're seeing here is the beginning of what's called a story arc. And if you're into hypnosis or, or you teach hypnosis, this is something that's called fractionation. Or if you are in some kind of an interrogation world in the military, this we might call this emotional fractionation. We start out with, this is my oath. Here are some victims, but I promise you I'm going to fight for you. And then... So this is just a couple of little bumps there. And now we're just hitting the point where he's talking about the victims, the police department, the guy in Dallas who, who, who was killed and all the people who were affected by this. So now we're at the, the big fall of the story here. So this, this would represent act two in a three act structure to where this is like the big crux of the book. And we're coming down and we'll, we'll see how he decides to make this thing go back up again and, and how we're able to finish on a good note and we leave the reader or the viewer satisfied towards the end. We see a little more of the teeth exposure here that's completely normal for anybody that's, that's watching. That's his normal behavior from probably the time he was 20. And uh, we see some more podium gripping here. And one thing you'll notice is any other interview you see, his town hall meetings, his rallies, He's making eye contact with people in the audience nonstop. He's looking at the camera. He's looking straight ahead. Right now, if you go back and look at his eyes, it's from teleprompter to teleprompter. And the only time we see him look forward is just a couple of times when he is switching from one. He memorizes that final few words, makes eye contact, and switches to the other teleprompter. Right. And I believe that's why it sounds almost, um, it's, it's, I mean, maybe he's read it twice. You know, I'm read the speech because he's going through that da 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 and there's specific things he does when he's reading. You know, yep. and he gets that shoulder goes up and he gets that little wincing thing when he when he talks about things. But I think that's I think that's from inside. I think that's actually bothering him. You know, he's trying to get it done, so that that's what that's about. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I, obviously he's not it this isn't hasn't been rehearsed very well at all. But I mean obviously he's read it, but he's he's got a problem going through it. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so I got a few things. Um, when he says righteous cries of peaceful protesters is the only time I see his arm not move, but close to his rib cage. That's usually an indicator of stress or fight or flight or disgust or anger or some emotion because humans walk around with your soft white underbelly exposed to the world. We create exoskeletons when we feel stress. So we put our elbows tightly to our side. The only Ex time I see it in the entire thing. Explain what an exoskeleton is. Yeah, so just meaning you're trying to protect those soft, white, underbelly organs of yours from attack. We're Like I say, we're the only animal that walks around and shows our abdomen to the world. So we have to protect. We create an artificial skeleton or bony surfaces between our vital organs and the rest of the world. And you can see his elbow pull in, which is the only time I see it. Um, he talks, 
one of my favorites, the, and this is the Trump condescend China. It's the same one, residence. He's very condescending to these governors in that moment. And if they can't hear it, shame on them, because I can certainly hear it. Um, his punctuation between when he's talking about a police pro- precinct has been overrun here in Washington, he misses the punctuation. It should, you can tell that it says a police pro- precinct has been overrun and here in Washington, or, but he just rambles through that as if he's saying here in Washington, this happened, these two pieces. The sentence doesn't work together. And then well, let's just, their last two are really powerful language written by someone. I am their president. I am your president. This is one of those things you could, all the times we see Trump, we'll often say he is divisive or all politicians are divisive in today's world. This is one of those attempts by his writer to say, I'm their president, I'm your president, and I'm going to protect you collectively. It's good writing. Okay. What do you got, Mark? So it really is very, very good writing. Let me pick up on some of the classic images that are being used here, which have a contemporary meaning, but there's a very old um, uh, resonance, cultural resonance. Let's start with savagery from Savage, wild, this idea of a wild place. The idea of the thugs, the thugays, which were, uh, to my understanding, uh, a, a group from India who were Um, rampant in battle and very difficult to handle. The Vandals, uh, a Scottish tribe that Hadrian had to build a wall in order to keep them out and keep them encroaching on the state of Rome. So there's this idea of the the ordered state, what we might call the walled garden, the paradise, being encroached upon by chaos, savage, wild chaos from outside. And then the idea of the crime against God. So it invokes a higher power uh, in order that the repercussions of this uh, are, are due to uh, that, 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 I guess, um, uh, encroaching on the higher power and the higher order. So it's, it's a big, big statement to make. Well, if you notice, he purses his lips at the end of that. And for me, what I think lip pursing is, those are not words that Donald Trump typically uses. All right. Uh, Chase, you got anything? Yeah, so let me just add on to what Greg said, just for the, the viewers. Those arms coming in to the body, the humerus sticking in towards the torso. We've spent a lot of our, our history as humans running away from giant cats. And one thing that stress and fear does to us, it makes our, our bodies protect arteries. So the, the, this artery under here, our, our brachial artery down here, squeezes in towards the body. If you go on YouTube and watch like a people getting scared compilation of like people jumping out of trash cans, you'll see shoulders go up to protect the sides of the neck. And even the fear facial expression makes this muscle right here tighten this uh, meatoclastoid muscle right here. And it almost jumps in front of the carotid artery. During that, just I talked to a cancer surgeon uh, a few months ago, so that he's had to move that out of the way to get to the carotid in many surgeries because of the, the patients. But there's one thing fear does, it makes us protect arteries. And we, see, we saw a good example of that here. Excellent. All right, let's move on. And a crime against God. America needs creation, not destruction. Cooperation, not contempt. Security, not anarchy. Healing, not hatred. Justice, not chaos. This is our mission, and we will succeed 100%. We will succeed. Our country always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. All right. Chase, what do you got? I think Mark's really going to expand on this from his perspective, but we see a lot of juxtapositional phrasing here, which makes people, we we pay a little bit more attention. 
And it's if we are, we're either A or B. You're, you're for us or you're against us. So that's, that's a, it's a great way to win an argument. And it's one of the, the techniques that's taught in law school for litigation and cross-examination or doing your closing arguments to the jury. That's fantastic. And we still see him squirming against the instructions to grab onto that podium and, and, and don't let go, which I, th- I think is fantastic to watch. And he's using words that are not his own. He's using more team focused pronouns here than ever before. It's usually I, me, my, all of these self focused pronouns, but he's, there's a lot of we here. Excellent. This, this is my, probably my favorite part of the whole thing because it looks like he's dancing in there. If somebody's going to grab that and put a track behind it, I know it because it really does look like something's happening there dance wise, but he's, he's squishing around. Cool so song or something. Oh man. <laughs> it's all, it's really, it's hilarious. But that's when people say, I bet this is a gift. His body language. That's what, that's what they're talking about. Yes. Or for us anyway, we see things like that. He's trying his best to hang on to that thing. So Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I got a lot on this one. He is leaking. Trump is leaking through all of the coaching. <laughs> these are not, nobody scripted these words. We will succeed 100%. Our country always wins. Those superlatives, that is Trump. Trump always uses superlatives. There's a grimace at one point when he's talking about um, restoring security and that. There's an orphan here that, so when I say I don't like things I can see in body language, there's an orphan phrase in this entire speech that fits nowhere else, and that's the Second Amendment. Explain what an orphan phrase is. So if I were walking through this entire thing and I were building you know, higher ground, pulling people together, all of that, all of this fits except for the Second Amendment piece. And I have a feeling this is a, an insistence that he puts it in here to say, we're not going to leave you out. We're not saying that you can't protect yourself, but we are going to protect you as well. My guess is that's some Donald Trump language put back in here, and it's tightly tied to the right, clearly, you know, the conservatives, although there are many gun owners in the U.S. who are not conservative. People seem to forget that. He is simply saying to citizens, we are going to take control, but we're not going to take your guns. That's an important piece for him to, to point out, and it is actually tightly tied to the message. We're not, not going to take away your rights, but we're going to, we are going to take over the streets. He calls himself a law and order president. This is an interesting twist. I just feel like that Second Amendment is an orphaned statement in the rest of this entire message. And Mark, you probably have comments around that one, I would imagine. Yeah, so to Chase's point, to your point, here's a piece of classic rhetoric. And if you're ever writing a speech, you could do, you know, no better than go for this piece of classic, uh, classic rhetoric, which is a this, not that. So he does a whole list of it's going to be this, not that, ending with something around security, not anarchy. So this, not that. You can start with the positive and go to the negative or start with the negative and go to the positive, but a great long list. And and what you get is an element of truism, which because it's rhetorical and because it's truisms, it feels really good just the rhythm of it already feels good. You don't even need to understand the linguistics. You get wound up in that kind of journey that that rhythm is taking you on. So again, I I totally agree with you there, Greg. This is not Trump's usual speech pattern. That's a good rhetorical writer. Really good catch there with the 100%. I mean, that's a that's a measurable, and no really great speech writer would put in a measurable like that. Uh, that's a, a classic superlative of, I mean, I'm surprised he said 100, not 110%. All right, let's move on. Your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. First, we are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, 
then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I am also taking swift and decisive action to protect our great capital, Washington, D.C. What happened in this city last night was a total disgrace. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers to stop the rioting, looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. We are putting everybody on warning. Our 7 o'clock curfew will be strictly enforced. Those who threaten innocent life and property will be arrested, detained, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. All right, Chase, what do you got? So right here, we, we just saw him go through this juxtaposition list, which basically, you know, as we're walking through the juxtaposition, we're saying, okay, yep, yes, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. So what he's doing is we're clicking back up that little emotional roller coaster. And we see him go to the top here. So now we're, we're going back up on the emotional plane here. And we're also seeing his use. Anytime you see him using words when he's really making eye contact with the audience, you know he's going off script. You know it. All those moments when we're hearing phrases that are like 100%, thousands and thousands of military people coming onto the streets, that's not in there. And you can tell because he's making eye contact, he reverts to his natural behavior because those are his words. Excellent. I agree with you. And we know some of these things are, when he's not hitting the words he's supposed to, they're supposed to be emphasized. Um, he does words like when he says, end it now, end it now. It just sounds odd. We should be saying, well, end it now. We should be saying that. That's why I don't think he's rehearsed it or read it very many times. I'm going to say, again, once, maybe twice the whole time. Um, a lot of these things when they should have emphasis on them, when I guess he's used to doing it with his illustrators, they don't, it's not there. The power that this thing could have isn't there. When he could really be punching. It just feels like he's going like this where he could really come around and get you good. Not Reagan. Around. Not Reagan, right? This is yeah, the, yeah. yeah There's all. no Reagan. Yeah, so for me, Chase, the thousands and thousands, sorry to jump in, the thousands and thousands I think is a big piece. Then he starts to give you – here comes the Moses down from the mountain. I'm going to quickly solve the problem for them with thousands and thousands of these. Um, I strongly recommend, you know, he's walking through the things that he's going to do for us. And he does start Trump's leaking out here. You can start to see him. And you can also, I imagine, see the speechwriter standing on the side, clinching, thinking, please stay on message. I'm sure his handlers are thinking because he is his own animal. All right, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so a couple of points here that I picked up on. I'd be interested in other people's view. Uh, the violence has been quelled. I think what I saw there was a, a bitter signal in his, in his mouth. If you, th if you think about sucking a lemon and you get this kind of bitterness there, it's that sense of uh, this will be a bitter sting for people. This will be um, a, a nasty taste. And then I think I got to breathe out on fullest extent of the law and a, and a, and a blowout uh, through the nose. Again, my, my, little, my little puppy does that when she, she wants you to know that, uh, that she could be pretty aggressive and nasty. She'll do a little like that just to tell you, just to tell you who you're dealing with. Is that and, uh, food we, time? We get, around food time, around if you won't play with her, she'll like give you one of those. Uh, apes uh, do it. Uh, often it's a, a full of out breath like that or a barker <laughs> like that. So yeah, exactly. I think, I think we're seeing one of those from, from Trump at that point. Again, this is, this is leaking as well. Okay. Yeah, I think he stays pretty close to on because of his hands. If someone mm -hmm. is coached him very well. We'll see that leak here in a couple of minutes in this next piece, but he's pretty still on. His brain is starting to hop in and say, I need to punctuate here. It's what's made him Trump to this point, regardless of whether you like it or you don't like it. It's what made him Trump. 
So yeah. I agree with you. And those anchors, or he's on there, somehow they've anchored that in here on him because he never yeah. does that. And he's, you as he... Sorry, go ahead. go ahead, please, please. No, so as he's, as he's doing that, somehow they've anchored it in there because when he's trying, he knows not to come off there. So whoever's asked him not to do that, you can't tell him what to do. But when they ask him not to do that, it's got to be somebody that he, you know, will listen to because he's not doing it. Mark, yeah, remember, now, we covered Hillary and, and Trump in Twitter, and we were watching the same thing. Hillary yeah. gripped yeah. because she's wooden when she's off speech. She would grip the podium, and he would stand there and dance around with all of this stuff. Yeah. But it's coaching, coaching, coaching. And I Absolutely. Agree. Look, I mean, if, if, in my view, if Trump is anything, he's a great entertainer, a great entertainer, and he's been well-trained in entertainment by one of the innovators of, of entertainment. The only reason we watch TV like we watch it now and some of the formats is because of Mark Burnett. And remember, he worked for years and years with Mark Burnett. And what you've got to see about entertainers is their illustrators will be big because they know it fills the screen and it keeps people watching them. And so when you stop Trump using those big, big illustrators, you kind of stop him doing what he does very, very well, which is attracting an audience. Whether you like him or not, you can't help but watch him. I, I think when you watch him in election, and we can cut this out, but I think when you watch mm. him in election... He does what I call the flaming bag of dog. <laughs> you can fill in the rest for yourself. The little Marco, the lying Hillary, that's a flaming bag because if you stomp on it, it gets worse. If you ignore it, it burns your house down. And he's just a master of that kind of thing. And it's entertainment, Mark. I agree with you. It is 100% entertainment. As far as, his, as the big uh, illustrators go, remember, he's, as he's trying to hang on, he's still getting them done. But that's why he's doing that squishing, squirming, and ducking stuff. It looks like he's and dancing. Because he's trying, he's still illustrating, but he's not able to use his hands or his arms. Yep. So I'd like to find out who was the one that had that talk with him. Because that's, that's, that's probably the most potent person in the White House. Yeah, for sure. So, Maybe his wife said, you look silly. Keep, hold on to the... <laughs> all right, <laughs> you go. Prop that, but yeah. ...of this terror to be on notice that you will face severe criminal penalties and lengthy sentences in jail. This includes Antifa and others who are leading instigators of this violence. One law and order, and that is what it is. One law, we have one beautiful law. And once that is restored and fully restored, we will help you, we will help your business, and we will help your family. America is founded upon the rule of law. It is the foundation of our prosperity, our freedom, and our very way of life. But where there is no law, there is no opportunity. Where there is no justice, there is no liberty. Where there is no safety, there is no future. We must never give in to anger or hatred. If malice or violence reigns, then none of us is free. I take these actions today with firm resolve and with a true and passionate love for our country, by far our greatest days lie ahead. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much. So, uh, Mark, you want to go first? Yeah. Um Here's the most interesting piece for me, and that's in terms of the rhetoric that's happening here, is there's a, an adaption here of the Prayer of St. Francis, a piece of rhetoric there, uh, where there is uh, light, uh, sorry, where there is darkness, let there be light. And instead, what the writer does here is where there is darkness, there will be more darkness. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic piece of rhetoric which has been corrupted to some extent. The first part of it intrigues us because we've heard it before somewhere. And then the second part of it makes it even worse. So it ups the emotional stake 
of it. Quite clever there. Again, uh, if you're writing a speech, you can often do nothing better than just steal I an idea from something that culture already knows. Take a pop song that people know well, take a prayer that people already know really well, and adapt it slightly. And there's always something about the rhythm and the cadence and some of the words that cause people to think, well, this must be good and this must be true, simply because they've heard it before somewhere. Now, I love that entire idea. And we can hear, we're kind of closing up the speech here, and there's a threat at the end. If we don't do this, we're a threat. And we hear him speed up and very quickly use the word terrorism or terrorists. I think that was in the script on purpose. I don't think he would have used that word. He would have obviously used a word like idiots or something more derogatory and off cuff than that. But we do see him go off script a little bit here, but I think he's just adding words. And if there's one thing he's an expert at, it is adverbs. He is the adverb king of America. He is bigly. He's a bigly the adverb guy. And we, we, we see him do this here. And towards the end of the video, we're, we're seeing a perfect, this, this final knot. You know, we've sewn this thing up with perfect stitching, and he's put a, a, a beautiful knot on there. And when somebody mentions the word artist, we think painter or, or a musician. But the person who wrote this speech, that is art. This okay. is an artist. And just like what Mark Bowden said, there's a, a real popular book out there called Steel Like an Artist. And that's what we're, we're seeing here. We're seeing a lot of those things borrowed or stolen from things in the past. And the moment we encounter some kind of familiarity, we're more likely to believe something that we're hearing. So, Mark, you want, uh, Scott, you want to go next? Or? Uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Okay, so this for me, <clears throat> I'm going to get to this in a second. When people ask me, is there ever a time I wish I could not read body language? This is it. There is something very ugly in this. And I'll get to it in a second. But he goes off speech when he goes one law and order, one beautiful law and order. And he uses the Trump hand. He moves on in there and then he goes into the most disturbing part of this entire thing for me. And he says, that's his brain punctuating. When he says, first of all, he says, no safety, no prosperity. He slams his hand down. First emphatic we've seen from him yet. Pushes his tongue out. Then he moves into the next part of the speech. By far, our greatest days lie ahead. As he starts to do that, his hand comes up. Here's a great indicator he's been coached. He closes his fist and puts his hand back down. He's remembering his coaching. And he says, by far, our greatest days lie ahead. I wish I believed he believed that. When I look at him, his chin drops. You see concern in his forehead. His lower lip draws in and his upper lip laps over. That is not joyful looking. That's not... Now, is there, here's the problem for me. I've been in the intelligence community. Chase, you've been there. We knew this much intelligence about what's going on in our world. That guy is pumped full of information daily. He knows everything that's going on. I feel very, very, very uncomfortable with where we're at as a nation when I see that body language when he's saying that. And then he ties up using that proper written language to pull back to I'm going to a, a holier place. I'm going over to St. John's. And he wraps the speech up. And you, I couldn't agree with you more. This is perfect, beautifully written. I just wish I could not read the body language I saw there. Maybe I'm wrong. We can be. But I see sorrow. That's not a good thing. Excellent. Excellent. I agreed. I've got that written down in my notes. I was afraid to talk about it. I didn't, I didn't know if we'd get kicked off YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Controversy we'll breeds. find out. We'll see. We'll see. Controversy, controversy breeds popularity, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you want, why don't we throw it around the room one time and everybody kind of give it 10 to 15 seconds, really short, concise. Um, tell you what you think is going on and what happened. So Chase, why don't we start with you? I just think this is a wonderful example, this video in particular, because he doesn't do this very often. And he is an untrusting guy. He's naturally suspicious of every human being that is 100 yards away from him. And whoever it is that they got for him to trust enough to say, you need to grab that freaking podium and keep your hands on it the whole time. Whoever that is, I would like to meet that person. Same here. Yeah. So we see, we see him 
fighting against his, his training the whole time. We see him still injecting some of himself or, or leaking. We, we have nonverbal and verbal leakage that, that comes out there as well. I really enjoyed watching it because it showed who he was as a person. He's usually very honest, very honest and very brash and lacks a little bit of self-control on the podium. And we saw something very different today. Yeah. Mark, what do you got? Well, to, to Chase's point, I don't know who's working with Trump at the moment. Usually when Trump is performing well, uh, people start saying, where's Mark Burnett right now? Can we get him on the phone? Is he, what town's he in? What city's he in? Uh, Mark can do an incredible job with people, including Trump. Uh, I do want to say that the speech writing on this is, I think, quite excellent. If you want to write great speeches or you want to know how they're done, I want to give a shout out on Simon Langton with the UK government writing speeches, and he's got a really good handle on on rhetoric. So I just want to push his book out there because it, it is a brilliant book on how to write great rhetoric. Will you say his name again? Because you kind of glitched a little bit. Yeah, there. sure. It's 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 Winning Minds. It's by Simon Lancaster. Great book. Okay, great. The first part is what really kind of bothered me. I didn't say anything about that at first. I don't think I did. I have it written in my notes. Because when he comes out and he's so, I can see him running that as he's walking toward the uh, toward the party. You can see he's focused. Usually he's looking around. He's being, hey, what's up, man? I'm the, I'm the alpha, man. I, it's me. Here I am. It's me. And he's not doing that. He's like coming straight for that. I was like, I don't know. This is going to be, of course, he has to do that because of the situation in his position, <laughs> especially now. But that's the part that bothered me. And the words that he, that his diction is mo is the clearest on that he has no problems going through all the big, um, um, the hoo ha with him. Sometimes his diction, he's got great diction. Don't get me wrong. On a one to 10, he's always a 10. But he's got some things, he usually hovers around a six or a seven, but the things where the words he hits a 10 on, those are the things that bothered me because that's when he talks about the Second Amendment. That's when he talks about being the president for, you know, for everybody, you know, for, for both, both the, the, the nonviolent and the, and, the, and the regular, you know, normal peaceful protesters. Those are the things that started bothering me from the first. So I started watching that and kind of got in a, a little worm, or not a wormhole, like a, whatever, the, the rabbit hole, a rat hole about what he was saying there. And that started kind of worrying me. So I think it was, a, it was an extremely potent speech. I think it's one that's going to stick out for a long time because it was so different, like Chase was saying at the very beginning of this. So that that's my take on it. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is – everyone wondered when Trump would speak. This is one of those times you can't simply sit quietly and let the country go through what we're going through. And under high duress, I'm sure he finally decided he had to say something. No matter what you say when you're president, it's not going to be received well by someone. That's just the nature of it. It's my archangel thing. doesn't matter if you're satisfying 900 people. If 100 are dissatisfied, something is not going to work. So it's a real balancing act to say anything. At least he was smart enough to listen to who told him to hold this, this podium. Otherwise, imagine what we would all be saying right now. You're having a very difficult time reading real body language past seeing that he is dancing around and trying to move. We can see it leaking on his face. I think really good scripting, really good delivery by Trump. First time I've ever seen him stay on script and stay with it. You can see the leaking start. And like I said, I imagine his handlers were going, oh my God, if it's Burnett or whoever, this is Trump the product. It's a bad time in America. Let's hope that it satisfies and settles someone or at least a few someones and let's hope it pulls us together in some way there's a lot of work to do i agree i agree 100 percent. so i think this went really well and greg i think yours was the most poignant ending of all this and i think we uh i think i think this has been a, a good uh decoding or analysis 